this is where the unified namespace comes in. It, it, unified namespaces grow. I was just telling this to one of my business development people. They extend and grow with the innovation of your business, right? I mean, that's, I, I think, I agree with you that the standards are good. They give us a starting point, but a standard that isn't flexible is useless, right? Absolutely. And you take a look at what's going on with technology today, right? You take a look at what's going on with the OEM sensor vendors, right? They are pushing technology further and further down the stack into the sensors, right? That is going to enable us to sit there and take that sensor technology, deploy it down on the machine. And now I'm going to have new analytics that I'm going to be able to sit there and run my machine learning on or do whatever, right? And, and to your point, right? We're trying to squeeze blood out of a stone. And so we're going to sit there and look for any possible advantage we can to eliminate or reduce downtime or gain insight on how to operate our equipment, right? And so with, with as technology evolves and we get these new capabilities, right? Like six, a good example, they're coming out with a small little sensor for grippers that has an accelerometer on it, right? So now you get, you know, opening and closing times right down at the sensor level. Right. My PLC doesn't have to calculate that. I can get resolutions down in the milliseconds. And stuff, right. And it's yeah. so cheap for them to do that. Like yeah. when you ask the sensor OEM, how much did you have to invest in installing that intelligence on that sensor? They'll tell you, oh, all the investment was in the R&D and getting, you know, what what tech are we going to put on there and how will we structure the data and what protocol are we going to use? All the money was spent just in that R&D. But to actually manufacture at scale, it's pennies on the dollar. It's it, it's marginally increasing the cost of that sensor, but it, that marginal increase of cost is providing exponential return for their clients in terms of converting data events all around the business into information for optimization. You know, um, one other question for you as related to uh, what you do today. What are some of the key things that you're working on as it relates to Industry 4.0 today? And how has your, your membership in this Industry 4.0 community helped drive some of the decisions you're making um, with those, those specific projects? I, th I think the membership, so I think it's just helped reaffirm that I'm headed in the right direction and whatnot, right? But uh, to me, you know, without getting into specifics, Self-aware UIs is a big thing, right? And 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 what that self-awareness is focused on, you know, I almost sit there and think that I'm building a, a, a UNS UI on top of the UNS, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but a lot of my focus is around, I'm sitting there trying to sit there and say, you know, what does my business look like in five years? And, and how does, how does the life of a industrial maintenance mechanic or an electrician or an operator, or a quality engineer, or a manufacturing engineer, what does their life look like from five years from now, right? And the one thing I'm, I'm trying to sit there and, and, and fight, or not fight, but, but try to, to sit there and, and architect around is, is the death by a thousand apps. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's where I think there's a huge strength on the UNS, where, where you know, if you have all your nodes in the ecosystem publishing relevant information for my my operations into that UNS, right? Then can I give those point of, uh, you know, those end users one one pane of glass to sit there and do their day to day operations uh -huh. and get rid of all the noise? And, and have you ever have you ever had to carry two two smartphones forever? You know, like a personal smartphone and a work smartphone. Have you ever? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I use this example. You talked about the death by a thousand apps. I use, I try to use this example as the illustration, why you can't do that. Why there has to be a single pane of glass, a single point of entry on common infrastructure. And it really boils down to this. People who have to use multiple tools to get the data and information that they want is going to eventually, they will eventually gravitate to the one that is most useful and they will ignore the other ones, even if the most useful one doesn't have all the data and information they need. It's the same thing when you're carrying multiple phones. You're, you're going to, you're only really going to use the phone that is most useful to you. So if it's your work phone and it happens to have all the, the majority of the data and information you need, 
then it's your work phone is going to be the one that's, it's the one you're going to keep in your pocket and your personal phone, you're going to forget. Oh yeah, I didn't bring it this time. It It's the same concept. It's, and I don't know why it is. It clearly has to be some type of psychology for human beings, but human beings aren't going to walk around. You know, we don't carry four laptops and we don't, we don't carry three or four phones with us. Single pane of glass is so unbelievably critical. And single pane of glass, single point of entry for all data and information that you need doesn't work if you don't have a common data infrastructure underneath it. And that's the unified namespace. But I don't know how you 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 feel about that that illustration, but it's no, it's, no, no. I, I I think you're right on the money, right? I mean, it, it's 2022, right? We shouldn't be sitting there cluttering people's minds with 300 different applications, right? And there is no excuse in this day and age, not to have applications interoperably talk to each other. That's right. right? And the visualization front end part, I mean, that's peanuts nowadays, right? Yeah. Like, yep. I mean, especially with all the various no code solutions out there that will interact with one another through common technology. So, you know, again, Russ from Tulip, I'm a huge fan of Tulip's platform, right? I, I love Tulip's platform. The, limitations of Tulip are just around uh, some functions and capabilities that are not easily built in, you know, this is why I'm much more of an ignition guy and a factory, you know, frameworks guy, because I don't really have any limitations of what I can build there. But Tulip is of all of the cloud SaaS based solutions that interoperate with the technology we're talking about, they get it right. The more than anyone else. If you look at Microsoft, they wanted to create the single pane of glass through like Power BI, Power Apps, and Azure, right? That was the whole point. The problem was the, the technological approach they took to acquiring the data that you're going to put in those apps. And there's too much of it you had to leave, you had to lose because they used the digital thread approach. They forget the, everybody was forgetting the whole point that it's not just the data that's in your equipment isn't the, on, the only data that matters. And so as you move it, as you move data up a stack, you add to it, applications add to it. MES gives you context to sensor data that you didn't have otherwise. OEE is a really good example. Guess what? Machines, the, the thing that collected the sensor data, the PLC that collects the sensor data can benefit from that OEE calculation, right? You can, you can also write edge level automation that can be a function of what is our OEE calculation right now? And I have an option. I can do that two ways. Calculate OEE in that PLC controller, which is a terrible idea, or do it at a higher level and report it. Well, how do you do that? You don't do that in digital thread. Azure, Microsoft and stuff, they consume data straight up. Then they have this data lake. They put this analysis layer on top and they assume they never understand that applications apply context. Software, as you're moving up the stack, applies context. And all the things that added context to the data as the, as the data moves up the stack can benefit from the result, the KPI that you created. And you have to have a mechanism for the thing that added to also be able to consume. And this is the fundamental problem. This is why UNS and UNS at driven architecture is, is the way to go, because all you have to do is just extend. If I publish, I can also subscribe. So I can publish something that someone else is going to use. They publish the result and I, and I subscribe to the result. And, and it's, it's, it's a, it's a completely edge driven thing that doesn't require engineering at multiple points, you know? So. Well, and, and too many, too many people assume that, oh, okay, well, you know, power BI is a good one. Well, we're just going to report everything out through power BI. Well, do you know that? Like, like what if, what if people over here have a different use for that information, right? When, when, what happens when Power BI can't give you everything that you're looking for? You're going to, you're not going to go, you're not just going to shrug your shoulders, you know, you're, and go, oh, well, I guess I just won't want that. You're going to go buy some tool that'll give me the thing that's missing. Yeah. And this is why you end up with what, you know, I mean, I can only imagine your, your organization must have had, you know, I mean, if you, uh, one of my favorite questions to ask, companies is how many different pieces of so industrial software do you use? And once they start putting together their lists, it's crazy. I mean, it's generally hundreds to thousands 
of different pieces of software. All right, hey gang, as a quick reminder, if you want to sign up for our MES Bootcamp, which is starting in September and running through the end of November, where we're going to teach you how to build your own manufacturing execution system with core capabilities, go to iiot.university or click on the link up here. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the very first session.